<clears throat> Hello, and welcome to the Dark Elder Designers Roundtable. I'm Adam Troke, and today with me are Phil Kelly from Hello. Games Development and Miniatures Designer Jez Goodwin. Hello. These two gentlemen are the masterminds behind the new Dark Eldar Miniatures range and codex, and we're going to be talking to them over the next little while about facets of the new Dark Eldar, such as the background, uh, the miniatures, and the rules. Um, so with no further ado, let's ask the, uh, the first question, I suppose, which is, who are the Dark Eldar? Phil, I'm okay. going to put you in that one. No, that's fine. Uh, the Dark Eldar are uh, one aspect of the ancient Eldar race, or what ancient Eldar race became. Um, back in the day, way before the fall, the Eldar were at the very height of their powers. Their civilization was this majestic galaxy-spanning empire, and they were so powerful, their technology was so incredibly advanced, they could do pretty much whatever they wanted to. They, they terraformed planets, they made paradises, they quenched suns, quite like that term. Um, basically, they really had their, uh, their stuff together, and, uh, and as a result, they were incredibly powerful. But the backlash is... They didn't have to do any honest work, so <laughs> they became rather decadent. They uh, they began to sort of experience all of the pleasures that the galaxy could give them, and uh, they sort of um, pursued this goal of, of excess and sensation seeking and hedonism further and further, until uh, it led them down quite a dark path in the end. Um, so yeah, the dark elder are essentially the um, the unrepentant elder who who kept on. Pursuing these uh, these slightly yeah, ever more twisted and, and uh, plumbing the depths of depravity, eventually um, their empire kind of went through decadence and to uh, and sort of spiralled into, it's like I say, some quite unusual places. And I think uh, this is what led to the Dark Eldar. Really, that was that's what started it, anyway. Right. So um, something you've alluded to is this this fall, effectively, um, an event. What what is that? How does it take place? Jess, do you want to... Well, I, I, we've had this in the background for a long while. The Eldar have always been... Um, uh, one of their big parts of their background has always been the fall, i.e. what happened to the race to put them into position that they were, where they're all floating around on huge craft worlds in the middle of um, sort of deep space, um, all being very, very sort of like buttoned up and tight, trying to stop their uh, emotions and things from leading to the same sort of problems that they had when the fall happened. Um, the amount of excess, the amount of decadence that they went through eventually caused another chaos god to be. And a lot of people will know this anyway from reading it. Uh, what this story is about is what happened to those people who weren't on the craft worlds, didn't escape with the exodites, um, and aren't just sort of like drifting around the galaxy. This is the people that kept on going, as Phil said. Um, it's a little bit, Phil's got this great analogy about the party to end all parties, which I won't do now. But. That's not. <laughs> yeah, quite. But if you imagine that they wake up from the fall with a massive hangover, their only real sort of like way of doing it is just, just to keep on doing it. So the, the, the Eldar are still carrying on, the Dark Eldar are still carrying on with the ways that brought them to the fall. It's just that where they are and how they behave sort of like um, stops them from being sucked immediately into, into, the, into the warp from that. Sure, and you mentioned where they are, which is Kamara, the Dark City, isn't it? Before we get on to that, though, oh, okay. we've only just scratched the surface of this, so I think. Um, we, Jez and I spent a long, old time talking about the, the fall and how it applied to the Dark Eldar. Sure. And um, for people out there who aren't really au fait with the Eldar backstory, um, you, you guys know about the warp. The warp is another dimension where uh, emotions and uh, feelings are kind of reflected and they, they become manifest after a while. Sure. So if we were all getting angry in this room, then somewhere in the warp there would be a little anger demon that coalesces because of our anger. Well, these guys, the Dark Eldar, they were they were busy getting up to all kinds of crazy depravity, and that, that echoed in the warp. So these beings of sort of lust and perversion were kind of coalescing in, in the warp, and gradually what happens in the warp is like attracts like. So these all drawing in this more and more power was sort of coruscating through this mirror universe. And uh, yeah, some of the Eldar knew about this and were concerned about it. Some of them didn't really care at all, and they were just going to go straight ahead anyway and just get on with it. That's the Dark Eldar, or who became the Dark Eldar. Now, they originally this is the this actually leads into how Kamora formed, right? right. They um, all of the Dark Eldar who are on the extreme end of this sort of sensation-seeking spectrum, they were getting up to some right old naughtiness, and they decided to do it, it behind closed doors. So they would make what we call sort of sub-realms in the webway. 
mm-hmm. and they have their little pleasure palaces and their kind of almost like pocket universes within or pocket areas within the webway which were hidden from prying eyes um, for them to uh, pursue their esoteric pursuits and that's where much of the much of Camorra comes from essentially is it's a, co- a coagulation of all those hidden realms Right, okay. um, we, we wanted to do a lot more with the webway, didn't we, basically? Because we'd always have the material universe, chaos, and then the webway or the labyrinth dimension has been the bit in between the two things. Sure. So, um, we'd, you know, it had originally been uh, a way of the Eldar getting across the galaxy through warp gate, through gates and things without using the warp. But actually, we wanted to expand it as a sort of third part of the universe, mm-hmm. really. And the idea that the Dark Eldar fell and then somehow they all got into the webway and started building a massive city, because you look at that and you go, so where were the brickies and stuff like that? <laughs> um, we thought it would do, that actually the idea that there were already settlements in the webway, there were already pockets within this were being used by elements of the Eldar race, right? so this is what Phil's talking about. So it wasn't just the fact that we thought... You know, some, the idea of being so powerful that you can actually make like a little pocket realm for yourself. I mean, if you if you could do, and you were an Eldar, and you wanted to hide things, then you would do it, wouldn't you, basically? Okay. Power to squint suns again is what Phil was talking about. So to, we we posited the idea that you, you could, you know, could effectively have like a pleasure estate there, or you could have something where you could keep it away from prying eyes, or you could just have somewhere that you could indulge in megalomania. Right. Um, but we'd also seen that, that actually... Things like the, the idea of, of, there, of there being these pockets within the webway, it was quite a natural reason for sort of like you could have like nodes for transport in there, which is sort of the, the origin of Camorra, thinking of that in terms of being like a port node, if you, if you can imagine that. So almost like a, a, a transit hub more than anything else, but one that's actually not in the material realm or in the chaos realm. So thinking about that and thinking, well, there were probably more than these anyway, so that would have given you potentially sort of not any number of ports, but Comora would have been the greatest one Absolutely. of that. So Comora itself, over the last 10,000 years, has really been the port node of Comora, plus all these other realms have well, gradually gravitated to towards it. And they're not physically, um, this is, well, this is going to be really difficult to explain, <laughs> the way in which we see the way that Comora worked. Um, but that's sort of the basis so that there was already something in the web when the Dark Eldar fell. So they had somewhere to escape to, effectively. Yeah. Or some of them were already there with their, you know, most of these would have been nobles um, or, you know, houses of aristocracy. But they would have had all their servants. They would have had all of their sort of like life support systems and everything already in there. So the Dark Eldar civilization sort of like grows from that rather than being just a bunch of people who flee into the webway and then sort of like, like I say, look around for a plumber. And things like that to make themselves a city, <laughs> if you can imagine. Yeah. Telephone sanitation engineer. Yes. Um, so what we have there is the, basically we had this question about, well, how did the Dark Eldar get away with, the, how did they escape the fall? How did they escape being consumed by Slanesh? Because to pick up where we left off, that all of these emotions coalesce till it gets to a critical mass. Um, Eldar society, the Empire, has just completely slid into utter corruption and decadence. Blood is running through the streets as they're trying to sate ever more murderous and peculiar desires. Uh, the whole thing has just gone horribly pear-shaped, frankly. Um, and this is what leads to the birth of Slanesh. Essentially, like I say, it reaches a critical point where a new chaos god is born, a god of ex- excess, basically, an indulgent. And, uh, and the birth scream of that god, the birth pains of that god, took out the heart of the Eldar Empire in the blink of an eye. It destroyed... Hundreds of worlds, billions of souls were just consigned to oblivion, just like that. And the Dark Eldar have managed to escape. Well, how have they managed to escape? If you look closer, you find that although they were physically have escaped, they've they've gone into their sub realms and they've they've gone into these little sanctuaries that they built ages ago. They haven't really escaped at all. They've just consigned themselves to a different curse, almost, which is to slowly, ever so slowly, have their souls drained away by the great enemy Slanesh. So instead of having a nice quick death like most of the Eldar, these guys have consigned themselves to essentially an infinity of a very slow and gradual decline. And that's kind of like the tragedy of the Dark Eldar, is that they might, they might tell you or like seem that they're on top of their game and they're the kings of the world, they can do whatever they like, but really they're the, they're the ones that have got the worst fate of all because their souls are being slowly sucked away into the warp. And uh, 
that's kind of part of the sort of the grist of this thing, really.